Right, this is the tool video that I suspect most people have been waiting for, and that's the car dent puller. Um, it's one of my favourite tools now. And it's a great way of dipping pots without having to use tongs or without leaving finger marks or anything like that. Um, this is a Gunson something rather mini car dent puller. I'll post a link below. You can buy them on Amazon in the UK definitely and occasionally they come up they're, they're on amazon.com and probably other versions of Amazon um, but they seem to be a little harder to find elsewhere but it's a, a, a five and a bit centimeter car dent puller the idea is that it's to pull dents out of cars and it's basically a suction cup attached to a handle so you hold that bit you sucker that to whatever you want um, as you lever it just suctions that bit in and sticks. Um, I did a tutorial for Ceramic Arts Daily where I demonstrated it in use um, and I got there were comments in, underneath the article of it working saying that pe people have tried it and it doesn't work and so what I want to do is tell you how you can figure out whether or not it's your car dent puller or your process and then what you need to do to make it work. Because obviously it works. Um, and there's a good demonstration for this. Assuming it's a bit of in the video. This, I just weighed this tub, this is a tub of glaze. It is five kilos. And the dent puller will pick that up. If you have a surface it can stick to, it's more than capable of dipping a mug show you with this mug which weighs a third of a kilo so one fifteenth of the weight of that it's not going to struggle to hold it but in order to suck to something it has to stick to a flat surface so the first thing to say is that if you're using a rough uh, clay that after bisking has a texture to it that might be the issue um, I'm not so I don't need to do this but if you are I would recommend sanding the bottom first and wiping it clean. Then I would recommend, well this is essential, you've got to wax resist the bottom. Bisque to clay is porous, that's why it takes up the glaze. Um, if it wasn't porous you wouldn't, you, you'd really struggle to glaze it. I mean there's certain uh, industrial processes, a lot of, well I saw, I saw a, a slip cast porcelain factory where they fire the porcelain to full temperature before glazing and they have specially formulated glazes. Assuming you're not doing that, um, your glazes are taken up by the porosity of the material, meaning that if I suck at the car temple to that, it will hold for a second or two, but there will be air passing through it and after a little while that will release. So you have to wax resist the bottom if you want it to hold for any length of time or fire your clay to the, the point of maturation before glazing, if that works well. If you're going to wax resist, and this applies to everything really, and you're, you buy a commercial brush on wax resist, I don't know if this is true for the kind of heated waxes or any of the, the other kind of products you can use, but if you're using just a commercial brush on wax resist, I dilute mine I think probably three or four to one. So it's one part wax to three or four, four, port, three or four parts water um, to make it much runnier. It mixes well. Um, what it means is you don't get that as much of that um, kind of bubbling up as you brush over it. So I wax resist on the wheel, and this is using the gif and grip. I'll do a separate video for that. Um, some point because that's another great tool but I just define where I want the blades to go down to and then this is the relevant bit for the dent puller wax will resist across the hole at the bottom now you can see there's a couple of those little bubbles I was talking about but for the most part there's no texture to that if when you're wax resisting you haven't diluted your wax and you're getting a bumpy surface that might be the issue. So in that case, dilute your wax and just keep diluting until 
that goes away, or until the wax resist stops working, which I think would have to be really dilute, but I've never gone far enough to see what happens um, if you over dilute it. So now the dent puller will stick to that, no problem. Next issue, I've got a logo stamp. And I stamped that into the clay while the clay was soft and it goes in probably half a mil. You can often get away with it because there's a bit of give in the outer part of the rubber. It will be a bit forgiving um, if you put it over a gap. But if I put it over my logo stamp, I suspect, yeah, it won't stick. The logo is deep enough that air can get through that and it will just come off. So the solution is obviously to line the dent puller up so that it doesn't cover it doesn't straddle the logo, it covers it or doesn't cover it at all. You have to be either one or the other. You can't be part way across because that will allow air in. Same goes with any sort of texture. If there's anything where it lifts up part of the dent pull around the, the edge, you're not going to get a seal, it's not going to hold it. But so long as you've done all of those things, it'll hold a mug. And as I showed with that, it's capable of holding a lot more. So this isn't testing it to its limit by any means. Um, you will potentially find that it releases slowly over time. So don't hold anything for more than kind of aiming for 20 seconds or so. Suck it on, dip and release as soon as you can. Just because, or don't trust it after 30 seconds because eventually um, there will be air getting, there might be air getting in somewhere. There's no guarantee. I mean, it will suck in theory that'll say suckered for a while, but that's not really what they're designed for. So, because you just stick it on and pull your car dent out, you're not gonna leave it on there for any length of time. So don't trust it for any length of time if you can avoid it because um, the piece will eventually just fall off. And I know people who've lost pieces after they've been holding it for a few minutes like that and then eventually just fall. And obviously it's a bisque piece, so it's a bit more fragile. Um, but that's it really. Um, they're very useful because obviously you're holding it from the bottom. Very easy to dip into a container. The container can be essentially the same diameter. In fact, I might show you that just because it's a really neat thing. If you're dipping tumblers or travel mugs or anything without a handle, you can and you don't have much glaze, you can find a measuring jug normally, but like a one litre measuring jug will have a diameter of about that, which means that slides down perfectly. You can put about that much glaze in the bottom of a jug that tall. And as you plunge the, um, like the travel mug or the tumbler or whatever down, it displaces the glaze so much that you can dip to a, a depth of, you know, a decent depth, with that much glaze, just because the form fills the shape so well that it displaces up the side. And you wouldn't be able to do that with tongs. With tongs, you've got to have enough clearance around the edge to, to grip it, meaning that you can only dip in things that have loads of clearance, and so you've got to mix up big uh, mixes of glaze. And this is far more convenient if you're not in a studio with you know, 10, 20 litre buckets of glaze which I tend to only do buckets this size. They're great for dipping mugs because they're, you know, so a nice size you mix up. Three kilos of glaze will fill one of these. Um, but uh, yeah, they're really, really useful. I'll post a link, um, but they work. So if anyone has got one and it's not working, sucker it to something plastic Oh, the other thing I don't think I said at any point. The one last tip that I, I had there, and if you, you might have noticed, but I don't think I said, is make sure the surface is wet. Or, if it's not sticking, make sure the surface is wet. It's not essential. You can suffer it just fine without any wetness. But that makes a seal around the edge and just, uh, it, it helps and there's no cost to it. So if in doubt, I always do it anyway, just make sure that surface is slightly wet. Um,
but yes, that's another thing. But so if if it's working for you, great. Um, I recommend this one. I'll post the link. If it's not working for you, run through that list of things because if it can suck to something, then it should be able to suck out to a wax-resisted mug. And if it can't, then one of those things is almost certainly the reason that it's not. Um, and they're very easy to fix with the possible exception of if you're making pieces that are the wrong size or have a wobbly foot or or planters with a hole in the bottom it won't obviously it won't suck to those because the hole lets things through so um unless there's a, a physical reason why your piece won't work uh run through that troubleshooting list i'll show you this piece being dipped just so you can see it in action but it is pretty much exactly as you'd expect from watching that Right, so I'm going to be glazing a travel mug and I'm going to demonstrate what I meant about the um, using a jug. So as you can see, it's quite a tight fit inside there. So I have enough, probably just about enough floating blue um, left to do it the conventional way. But what you can do, because it's such a tight fit, I don't actually want to plunge all the way to the bottom, but if I put about that much in, which for comparison has moved probably an inch, maybe a little bit more on the, the main container. Um, and this is an impulse mug, as you can see from the dots. But what I would do is just dip and the displacement into that little bit of glaze you basically move it down an inch and the glaze comes up probably three inches Actually, probably not enough. Just... I reckon that should be a good application but um yeah so in theory you could get by with probably 300 ml of glaze rather than having to have probably um, about two liters if you put it in one of the big pots uh, and obviously you wouldn't you could dip in that with your fingertips that would just about work but it isn't comfortable getting your hand down there um, whereas the dent puller is ideal for dunking into things like that and also having lots of different shaped containers are really handy for different shape pots because if you can get one that's a relatively tight fit to the thing you're dipping you can get by with a lot less glaze um, which is handy when it's reached the point where you really should be mixing up some more but you can't quite be bothered which um, I find myself in quite often. <laughs> 